got our heel down the center of our mat. <clears throat> For me, I had my right foot forward, the left foot back. Sorry about that with the Wi Fi. It's a chance I have to take work doing this outside. So we'll reach our arms up and we're doing our flow. You might have been having to do that flow a few more extra times. Then we'll hold it down and enjoy our warrior. Relax those shoulders down and towards the ear and feel the length of our spine. So for anyone getting a recording, you'll obviously this one might be split into two separate ones. Wonderful, let's move into our lunge pose now. So as we lift our back heel, we engage the core so we're nice and strong, pressing into both of our feet. We'll bring our hands down, anchor, drop that knee down, take the top of the foot down onto the mat and rise up into our lunge. And here's where we can have a little bit of fun. First off, anchoring through our foot, our knee and that back foot as well. You can place your front hand on your leg your other one can reach up or back for the back heel. Now to get a little closer, maybe you sink more into your hip flexor and add a little bend. Maybe you can reach on this side. Maybe you could reach on the other side. I can reach on neither and that's okay. No judgment. Just enjoying every breath of every day, every moment. Well, what a blessing it is to, to breathe, to get older, to age, and just love your body through those times. Wonderful. So we'll lift it up, frame that front foot, tuck the back toe, push it back to downward dog. Make sure you're anchoring through your hands first, slide that foot back, downward dog. So remembering that foot that we reached for on this side, now we'll go into our three-legged dog, lifting it up. You may scoot your foot, scoot your foot, scoot your foot to the center of your board. You can bend your knee or not, whatever works for you. And then if it feels okay for you, we'll move that little core. It's not a flow, it's a hold. So we come through and draw the knee to the nose. Try to give it a little kiss if you can. If you want to tap your toe down, no big deal, go ahead. So good. Push it back to our downward facing dog. Wonderful job. And then we'll make our way into a kneeling plank. Coming into our kneeling plank here. And now, fun thing about this one, let's take our feet up. So we're in our kneeling plank. You can cross your ankles if you want to, but you don't have to. And then moving forward, bending our elbows. So we're just looking between our hands, holding our kneeling plank. If you would prefer to be in a full plank, of course you can do that. We'll push it back to all fours. And now we will have that option to stay with the kneel or move up into our full plank. Holding here, all fours is an option. So this is where you wanna make sure you're pressing into your feet and your hands. And you're kind of dispersing your weight throughout your body. Breathe. Find a little bit of stillness within. Push it up to downward dog. We let that head hang heavy here in between our biceps. We're maybe looking back between our shins or our knees, pressing into our hands and breathing all the way into Cobra Pose. So as we come down, we put our knees down, our hips down. We're in a striking Cobra. So the chest is up off the mat. And in striking Cobra, our elbows are relatively straight. A regular Cobra, you've got a bend in your elbows. So right here, but I want you to think of activating your quads and pressing those down into the mat. Breathe. Amazing job. Let's look over one shoulder, bring it to center. Look over that opposite shoulder, bring it back to center, and we'll lift up and back to child's pose. If you need to adjust where you are on your mat, please do so. I cannot wait to do this with you guys on the water. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have some fun, some giggles. 
and right back to our downward facing dog before we come to forward fold. So check out where you are on your board and you'll want to step to the center of your board. And now if that means taking a bunch of small steps, great. If you wanna take one big step, you can. You find the center of the board. We've got space between our feet and we'll lift up into our monkey pose. Take a moment to notice that you are pressing down into your feet. We've got a flat back, shoulders away from the ears. You feel a stretch through your pelvic floor. And then fold again, exhale, let the head hang a little bit here. You could touch your mat if you want to. You could have a big old bend in your knees and rest your belly there. Back into our monkey pose. So that's just a halfway lift using our belly button and our obliques, our core to hold us here. We'll bend our knees, reach our arms forward, palms face each other. And then if you want to, right up into that full chair with our arms reaching up, our hips reaching back. So if we were on the water, we could play around with this a little bit. You could press into either foot, check it and how that feels to disperse the weight. Maybe after a few classes or two, we'd be able to shift our weight so that we'd be facing the long edge of our board in our chair pose. And then you could play around with shifting the weight onto the toes and shifting the weight onto the heels. Just seeing where you are, noticing the different sensations. But for today's practice, since we're on ground, we can kind of do both of those. All right, bring it back. And then we'll straighten up into our mountain pose. If you need a little bit more space between your feet, you'll find some more space there. Open up across our chest and breathe. Let the air, let the wind play with your hair. Allow the sun to warm you and the moon to replenish you at night. Back into our chair. You can choose if you wanna be facing the short edge or you wanna play around with facing the long edge. We're going to do one arm balance and that's just an option. I'll show you some different options if you don't wanna do the arm balance. It'll be um, crow pose or a nice big squat. So let's lift it up. For today's practice, we'll be facing the short edge for it. You'll find some space between your feet. Now, if you're on just want to say one thing, the indoor board is, is a bit narrower than the a regular paddle board. So if you're on an indo board, one way to do this is to grab the edges if you wanted to do it or step off your indo board and you'd be put, you'd be doing your squat on the edge and doing your, your um, crow like so. So there's a couple options. All right, let's sink down into our squat. So we're shifting our weight back. You've got some space between your hips so that you can let your hips fall down. If you're on your indo board, again, maybe you're sitting off of it. Hands are either here or you could grip the front, but just make sure to be very careful. <laughs> All right, so if you're new in arm balances, maybe just hold your squat today. If you wanna try it out, you could even have a pillow or something in front of your head. Hopefully that internet connection. Oh good, it just said I was unstable, but hopefully I'm back. All right, so let's look forward. Make sure we're in the center of our board or the center of our board's kind of under our chest or where our hands are gonna press. We'll um, anchor onto the outsides of our, or the insides of our knees onto our arms and look forward. The key is to look forward, not to look at the back of your board. So we'll lift up onto our toes, shift forward, and maybe you play around with just lifting one foot or lifting the other foot. You can play around with that a little bit. And then when you're ready, you'll come up, maybe a cat back. So you're either squeezing your arms or you're resting your elbows or your knees into the armpits. I like the squeeze myself. It's a little bit of both. And you can lift one foot or the other, finding your crow, looking forward so that you don't fall, finding your breath and then bringing it down. Or maybe you're just hanging out in that squat, really loosening up your hips today. Let's lift up our hips now. 
back to our forward fold. Let our head hang. And then our right hand will come more towards the center of our board. You could have a big bend in your knees and your other hand's going up for a twist. Maybe you tuck it back behind you if you're taking care of your shoulder. And then the hand goes down and we'll do the other side. A little twist, we can reach up. One way to activate a little more sensation is whichever hand you've got reaching up, you bend that opposite knee. So we can try that again on the other side. Make sure you're breathing, my friends. Other side, so we bend and reach. Oh, that feels good. Bring it back. We'll walk those hands a little bit forward and step back to downward facing dog again. Wonderful. Inhaling into a plank, either full or kneeling plank. And now it's time for our side planks. So let's bring ourselves to our knees first. You'll have maybe a hand over here on the little bit of a corner and that other foot is out on the opposite corner. The knee is right in the center of your board and we can lift up into a side plank. So I notice my hand is a little bit forward. I wanna bring it right underneath my shoulder. And here we have either our kneeling side plank if you wanted to go into a full side plank, maybe that hand is gonna go more to the center. You'll stack your feet or you'll have one in front of the other for your kneeling side plank. Now think of having some of the weight in the feet. Imagine lifting your belly or your lower hip up and away from your board. Now your shoulder might be shaking like mine, that's okay. That means we're building muscle strength. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Holding, holding, holding. Anytime you wanna come down to a knee, you can. Or bring your hand down or tuck it back behind you. We'll slowly come to our regular plank. Make sure to disperse that weight evenly across your board, move slow. And then what we do on one side, we must do on the other. So if you're doing the kneeling plank, you've dropped that knee down and you've kickstand your foot out a little and you find your kneeling plank on the other side. Or you could even give that, you know what, give that wrist some rotations too while you're at it, while we're here. Tuck that thumb in. Or you're gonna move into your side plank, either stacking your feet, or I like to have the top leg, the top leg is in front on the inside of the foot and the bottom leg is down outside of the foot. We reach up and let's do some joint churning on the wrist one way and then the other. Make sure you're all still with me. Yay. <laughs> this is so great. One way. So we focus on the wrist. Takes away some of that focus on the oblique. So lift it up from the back, from the board. And now let's slowly turn to our full plank again and slide it back to child's pose. So if you need to make your way more to the center of your board, you can do so now. Child's pose either reaching forward or reaching back for our heels. It feels so nice. Imagine if you're on the water, the sun on your back. Wonderful. So now coming to our back. So into a supine position, take your time to sweep down onto your backs and we'll be doing our, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I skipped a whole page of my, my work, my work. So let's go back, bringing our left knee out on an angle of our mat or a board to the outside of your left hand. So I wanted to do a pigeon pose here just to stretch out and then okay yay you're still here <laughs> crazy so we're in our pigeon pose i i lost you for a second but you're back pigeon pose left knee outside of the left hand we've got that back knee back down 
just because I'm hoping when we do our um, in person paddle boards, this will be one of our peak poses or something we're going to work towards this summer is pigeon or king pigeon. So if your left knees out we will bring your right hand to the inside more of the center of your mat and you'll start to bend and straighten your back foot and just reach for it. And maybe today this is just is just where you get to just with this. If you wanted to try, you'll reach back for that foot and reach the other arm up. So this is our uh, peak pose that we're going to work towards for the four classes. Sometimes it feels better to keep that hand down like you're, you're, you're asking your core to lift you up and it's just saying, I don't want to right now. I want to practice that a little more. So offer it. If it doesn't feel nice, make sure to pull back. And let's do the other side. So we'll press into our hands, tuck the back to one of the mat, lift it up and sweep the opposite knee to the outside of the other hand, our back knees down on the mat. So if we were on the water, we would have done that probably a lot slower. You can stay and enjoy your pigeon or bring, so the knee that's on the side, that hand comes in the middle. I think I just did the same side. Yeah, crazy. Okay, do whichever side you didn't do and you'll reach back and up. So either that way or the other way. I'm just gonna make sure I do do it on both sides. I think I had you guys do a twisted one on the first one. So that was actually harder than it needed to be. So same side hand, reaching back. And then you can reach up the opposite arm. Awesome, we're still there. Thank goodness. <laughs> and I did not want to forget the, this one, so that's why I had us come back up. So we'll release that foot, let your cheek fall down onto the mat. You'll sweep your foot around, and now we'll move back onto our backs for a bridge. So adjust your body however you need to down onto the mat. You'll be pressing your feet into the mat, make sure there's some space and we'll lift up into our bridge. And we want to anchor through our shoulder blades and our feet. <sighs> Might have needed sunscreen for this. Holding it here in your bridge pose. A little more connection with the water as our ears are a little closer to it now. We'll slowly lower, take the soles of our feet together and move into a supine butterfly pose. So stretching our groin, stretching our hips, and as an opportunity to bring yourself back to breath. If it doesn't feel good, bend your knees and go the opposite direction. So bring ourselves back to that breathing through the belly. Inhale, feel the belly lift. Exhale belly relaxes. So settle into that for about five breaths. So peaceful. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so now those knees will draw back together. And we'll walk our feet out a little bit towards the edges of our board and then let the knees fall towards each other. So a little bit lower back release here. Close your eyes, settle in. So you're staying there for about five, six more breaths. And then you can settle into your Shavasana. So when you're on a paddle board, a Shavasana can be a little bit funner because you can let your feet hang off the edges, maybe into the water, and you can let your hands dangle in the water as well. If it doesn't feel comfortable for you today to be laying down, then you could move into a seated position. Wonderful. Okay, so make your way into your Shavasana, and I'm going to read you a little relaxation while you're laying down. Imagine the sun on your chest, your hands in the water or seated position. Wonderful. 
So letting our arms and our hands float in the water, slowing down your breath, watching the inhalations and the exhalations, creating a softer and a longer breath. Watch how your body responds to the waves of your breath. Take your awareness right up to the crown of your head for a full body scan. Slowly move down through your body, checking in with how everything is feeling. Notice places where you feel evidence of your practice that we just had, maybe some warm fuzzy like sensations or the air in your muscle just is flowing with the water. With that awareness, now at your feet, allow them to soften. Relaxing your feet. Fully relaxing your legs. Let the legs feel heavy. Allow the kneecaps to feel like they are floating. Softening the lower back. Let the lower back sink into the support of your board, creating a feeling of spaciousness through the lower back. Feel your breath at your lower lungs. Feel the ribs expand on the inhalation and feel the breath come back to the center on your exhalation. Softening your heart. Softening through the front side. Softening the back side. Softening in between our shoulder blades. The sides of our shoulders. Feeling a spaciousness across our collarbones. Maybe you notice the water our fingers or imagine it on our fingers as you completely relax your hands, our neck, our throat, moving on to our jaw, relax your jaw, feel some space between your teeth, let the tongue sink right down to the bottom of your mouth and relax. Noticing our eyebrows and the space between them. Make it even bigger, that space between your eyebrows, relaxing your forehead. Our entire face soft and light. Relaxing our scalp. Let the ears feel like they're sinking. Staying right here, just above sleep. Fully enjoy all the sensations inside of you. Imagine the sun, the warm breeze, the water. And then enjoy all the sensations, like the lightness inside and the warmth. Feeling safe, secure. using our yoga today as an anchor to stillness. I hope that you're able to spend some time, even a little more time in your Shavasana. I have really enjoyed our time together. It was very fun. Hopefully our recording worked well. I'll let you know. Have a wonderful Saturday and I'll see you next week. Namaste.